Hey, good day to you. This is Stan Prochowski with Prochowski Estate Law, and this is the Ask Stan Show every Thursday at 12 noon, where I answer all your estate planning questions submitted throughout the week. If you have a question about wills, trusts, Medicaid pre-planning, Medicaid crisis planning, the nursing home, or just estate planning in general, just send them to me here on Facebook or call me at 363-7222 or email me at prochowskiestatelaw at gmail.com. I'll answer them live on WKSR Radio, and we post them here on the Ask Stan Show every Thursday. So, let's get right to it. Stan Prochowski, oldie of the week. You come, you pick out some good songs. I'll give you that. Oh, well, you know, it's, it was a good song era. So I don't take any credit for it. It was just a, uh, it was just a time of the one-hit wonders, and it was just, uh, I, mean, I love it. I played a, I played a one-hit wonder on my Gold Vault only this morning. You remember the song by Cimarron called Rings? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I played that one this morning. That's a good song, too. Yeah. Good morning to Alex over there. She's, she, she's in here filming all of you. No, yeah, me, but that, that's all right. That's okay. That's all right. Good, good well, to see you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, good. It's, you know, holidays are over. It's good to be back to the routine and um, you know, get back into what we do for a living. So it's, it, it was fun. It was good. Had a great uh, Christmas and New Year season. Hope you did too. Did. Um, yeah. Stay safe. Stay healthy. That sort of thing. But hey, what I want to talk about today, you know, over there at Prochowski Estate Law, we. We do estate planning, we do elder law, we do Medicaid planning, we do crisis planning, uh, all that kind of stuff. And we get a lot of people that call our office on a daily basis or drop in and set up appointments. And we get, you know, a lot of people that <clears throat> say that the reason they, you know, a lot of people, of course, say they hear me on the radio, but some people drop in and just say, hey, I, I Googled you and you got a five star review, and so I thought I'd come in and talk to you. And we do, and we're proud of that. Our clients that uh, review us are. Very happy with what we do. You know, but I got thinking, you know, if people are looking to come see me before they ever come see me, you know, they want to know the kind of, maybe they want to know the kind of person they're going to be dealing with. So, you know, who is Stan Prochowski and what, uh, you know, I try to get into this sometimes on my seminars and in some of my pamphlets, but you know, you only have so much time or space to really go into a background. So I was going to spend a little bit of time just talking about myself, which seems like a fun topic, but... <laughs> <laughs> But I don't, I, don't, I don't like talking about myself as, as much as some folks that we know. But anyway, I was just going to go over a little bit of my background. So, you know, if you are thinking about doing this and you're wondering, you know, who that guy on the square is or, what it, you know, how he got there, I'm going to kind of do it briefly in the time we have. And, you know, the first thing that um, people uh, react to is that, you know, I've not been a lawyer all, you know, all my career. I've not been in the law. Um, actually, when I was in school, I was studying, I studied engineering. You know, I actually grew up in Pennsylvania, but um, I went to the University of Pittsburgh and I, was, I studied engineering. And uh, when I graduated from uh, college, I was a chemical engineer and I, also a nuclear engineer. That sounds real impressive, but it really isn't. It's really not as impressive as it sounds, but I went into the nuclear engineering business where I pretty much worked at nuclear power plants uh, with General Electric who actually built some of the boiling water reactors. And I spent several years going from plant to plant, pretty much you know, spent 20 years generating electricity for one utility or another. And uh, like doing that, the only thing I really didn't like about it was it was an extremely regulated field. And they practically, you know, back in the 70s when, you know, I sort of let my age out a little bit when I said the Thorn Temptation Eyes in 71, I was still in high school. So, um, you know, in the, in the mid to late 70s, uh, nuclear power was a big deal. There was a lot of that going on. So uh, I, I did that. And one thing about being an engineer is that you're a real stickler for details. I mean, you dot I's and you cross T's because you have to. And uh, so I did that for like 20 years. Um, you know, I met my wife along the way and we traveled from, uh, you know, a lot of different towns and cities where we went to these different power plants and we got a chance to experience a lot of different places. And, uh, toward the end of it, uh, when I actually met my wife here at uh, the Browns Ferry plant down in Decatur, Alabama, is when I fell in love with the area around here. And uh, you know, she was from North Alabama there in Decatur. And you know, after we got together and got married, we, I stayed in the business and we traveled around to several places. And, uh, but we finally, you know, we decided that we choose on this area. We just fell in love with it. Uh, you know, loved getting out of the, just right outside of the valley of the rolling hills of Tennessee. And so that's where we settled down. I've always had an interest in the law. And uh, so I used to dabble with this and that, but nothing very structured. You know, I would just, you know, stay up late at night and read law books that I wanted on, on areas and topics that I wanted to educate myself on. And, um, 
anyway, as we as we were here in uh, Giles County, you know, I picked a nice place up in the north uh, west corner up there by Campbellsville, and I spent about five or six years building my own house. You know, I saw six. I was for six years I was one man show out there building the house. I just decided to retire to a private life for a while and get that done. And, you know, I used my engineering background because one of my goals was always wanted to build a house that was completely self-sufficient. So I built a house that has its own, generates all its own electricity, has its own water supply, its own sewage supply, fire suppression, heating, cooling, the whole thing. And it just sort of is self-contained, which was kind of a big deal when Y2K came around. Remember, <laughs> Remember <laughs> 1998, 1999 when Y2K was the big threat that came around? Everybody wanted to know, how do you, how do, you do that? So. Um, so that, that was a lot of fun, but uh, you know, in the late 1990s, 1998, I, did, I found out about the law school up in Nashville and decided I would go to law school. And I just loved doing it. I mean, I spent four years there, and I, uh, you know, it was, I just loved every bit of it. I don't know why it just clicked with me, no matter what the subject was, even when we had to spend a year studying taxes. I found, I found some joy in that. It was, uh, uh, I found fun in everything I did there. And, uh, uh, like I said, I just I just loved it. I just loved it. So um, as I, as I got into it, I, I graduated up there from 2002. Uh, officially started my law practice in 2003. And when I first started practicing, you know, like any new attorney, you uh, call what uh, we call them a door attorney. You know, where you just take anything that comes in the door because that's just the way it has to be. But I sort of gravitated toward um, criminal defense. So I did a lot of that for a while, and. Surprisingly enough, I was like four months out of law school into my private practice when I just got into my first jury trial. So I spent many, many years as a trial attorney, which we don't have many trial attorneys. You know, 99% of cases get settled, get negotiated. Not too many go to trial anymore. Um, so I did that. And when, you, when you're a trial attorney, the being an engineer for a background really was helpful because you have to, I mean, it's riddled with rules of procedure, rules of evidence, you've really got to know and dot the I's and cross the T's. And that was very helpful in that. And I was pretty successful. I tried some pretty uh, high profile and egregious cases. Some folks out there listening may have sat on some of my juries. You know, I was in several counties around here. So, uh, But you know, back in the, around 2007 to 2009 time frame, uh, was when I started giving uh, estate planning some thought. I won't get into it too deep, but it had a lot to do with when my parents passed away. My mother died first, and my father uh, just a few years after that, up in Pennsylvania. And uh, they went through probate. My, my both folks had a will, and they had a little bit of an estate. Nothing, you know, nothing really to brag about. You know, they had a house, uh, you know, some money in the bank. My dad dabbled in a few stocks, that sort of thing. Nothing very remarkable. But my youngest sister, uh, I was one of five. And, uh, my youngest sister was appointed the executor of that in the will because she still lived up there with them. And it, it was just an exasperating and annoying and an encumbering process because she would call me from time to time or vice versa and I would explain things to her as best I could or I would call there and find out what's going on. It dragged on for two years and four months. I mean, it was, you know, it's not like we had this giant estate to fight over. I mean, everything was going uh, well. There was no controversy, you know, no uh, conflict. And it still took over two years. And that sort of sparked something in me about that area of the law. And so I, I decided to make a change. And of course, you don't change from doing criminal defense to something else overnight. So it's, it took a couple of years for me to transition over. But uh, I, I, that's what I started to do. And that's sort of what got me into it. Because when I started looking into estate planning, I wasn't crazy about what I found of the state of the law. And it seemed, it seemed cumbersome. It seemed expensive. It was lengthy. Uh, it was riddled with procedure and deadlines. It was just an annoying process to go through probate, even in Tennessee, which actually is a probate-friendly state compared to many others like Pennsylvania. So I got, I got involved in that. Uh, then I got really interested in trust writing because, you know, when you do a trust plan or write a trust, that is a complete 100% probate avoidance technique. And so I, that definitely captured my attention, and I decided to embark on a self-study to learn you know, trust writing and what we can do with that. And then in 2012, Tennessee, and along with 28 other states, I believe, adopted the Uniform Trust Code, which I thought was a, a grand uh, gesture on their part because it, was a, uh, it opened up a lot of trust law, a lot of things we can do. 
And the Tennessee legislature actually uh, uh, enacted a lot of trust laws that made our trust laws very, very favorable to people. And so that just sort of cinched the deal, and that was, you know, I was, I was headed that way. And not too long after that, I, I reached a position where that's pretty much all I did. You know, not for about five or six years, or I'll have, to, I'll have to think back on it, but that's all I've been doing is uh, estate planning. And I love it more than I like anything else I've done uh, as I've been practicing law. I mean, I like being a trial attorney. Uh, I liked some, a lot of the other stuff I did, because, you know, especially when it was a unique case and I had to do some research, uh, I enjoyed it. But I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoy what I do now because um, it is a unique, it is just as unique as anywhere else. And, you know, when I used to do criminal law, I used to think, wow, everybody that walks in here has got a different story, a different charge, a different set of facts, and how interesting to not do the same thing twice. Well, in all reality, when you practice criminal defense, it is the same thing over and over. It's either drugs or DUI or assault. I mean, it's just, it's kind of a broken record. But when I get into the estate plan, it truly is unique and circumstance driven because everybody everybody's circumstances and facts are are unique and it's it's really cool i mean i i, I just i really like that about this part of the business so that's how we got there and uh, like i said we like doing it uh, that's all we do i you know i decided at some point you just can't you know you can't nobody can practice all area of the laws and be effective in any of them you really do have to hone in on something so you know we do a state law and then i got about four or five years ago, I got, in, I got intrigued by the concept of elder law. And really what, what brought that about was the concept that everybody would ask, I'm worried about everything I own going to the nursing home. And that's what sort of prompted that. And as I looked around, nobody practiced that law. Nobody did it around here. I mean, some folks brushed with it and uh, dealt with it superficially, but nobody really dug into this asset protection trust or these income only trusts where you actually Take your property and secure it and pre pre keep it from being consumed by the cost of long-term care, which, as you know, is catastrophic. So, you know, that was just the recipe for how my law firm got the way it is, and that's what I've been doing ever since. And I'm just as happy as a clam about it. I like doing it. Uh, you know, we got Alex working there, Miss Tammy, we got Miss Courtney that work for me, and um, they seem to be, you know, happy in what they do. So, you know, who knows, maybe we'll even grow bigger than that. But, uh, we've been successful, you know, we've been pretty well received. Uh, I just wanted folks, that, you know, that come in that maybe don't know me or haven't been to my seminars and not heard a little bit of my background to uh, you know, know who they're dealing with before they, before they get there. Uh, hopefully I didn't come across too much of a geek. I don't like Could that term, but I guess maybe so. I am. <laughs> but uh, anyway, what I want to finish up with uh, you uh, pretty briefly is, uh, you know, we, we are in the new year. And we do do estate planning and elder, we, and elder planning. We do that. That's, and as that's we finish the holiday time. season, we move into a new year. And I think what you might want to think about is you, know, you can take stock of, well, I got, um, I got of Stan, your life. I, got in the new year. On right I mean, now. what's up, Stan? I mean, let's think about it. We all take stock in our health and our fitness, especially these days. We certainly uh, take stock uh, in our not, finances. I'll check it here. We take stock in our relationships. You know, the, right I'll now, a lot of people are in the concept or the category of out with the old, in with the new kind of thing. So, you know, if you're like, us, or I might say mostly Miss Tammy, you know, she's pulling out boxes down from the attic, she's packing away the Christmas stuff, the decorations, kind of the winter clean out. She's cleaned out some closets, you know, we, I've got a big old black leaf bag full of clothes out in the truck that we're taking down to God's storehouse. Um, you, know, you know, finally, I walked in the other day and I could see the floor of the closet and I was like, whoa, <laughs> hey, how about that? So, you know, so you kind of winter clean out, making, making some room for some, maybe some new things that came in at Christmas, but you know, when you're, taking, when you're taking the time to do all this, you know, these upcoming weeks, I'd like to ask folks to do something. You know, as you're cleaning up or as, you know, maybe we finally get to spring, you're spring cleaning, you're, you're going through all this stuff. You know, I coined the phrase, your stuff. When you're looking at all your stuff, walk through the house and, and, and look at everything. And look at all your stuff and ask the question, what on earth would my family do with all this stuff? I mean... If something happened to me, what are we going to do with it all? Where's it going to go? Uh, does somebody get it? Does somebody take it? Does we sell it? What, what do we do with all this stuff? I mean, how would they know that I want like my knife collection to go to my grandson or, or, or my wife's wedding ring to go to their youngest daughter? You know, or most importantly, you know, where might they find a will or a trust or insurance papers, advanced health care directives, uh, burial pre-planning, uh, etc. I mean, where, 
when the time comes to find that stuff, where would it be? I mean, do you have it? You'd be surprised at how many times folks come in and say something happened to mom and dad, and we don't even know if they had a will or not. And it really turns into like a scavenger hunt. If they had one, where would they have put it? You know, and if, if you can't find it, I mean, imagine it. You go to the time, energy, and effort to write a trust plan or do a will, and it can't be found. I mean, it, it just sort of negates the, the process. So, I mean, if you're like 80% of Americans, uh, you know, you, you, you have good intentions. But I'm going to tell you, from the increasing number of phone calls in my office, people telling me that, you know, something that mom and dad had recently passed, and they can't find a will, and they just have no idea where to find it or what they should do. I mean, we honestly get maybe six to eight calls like this a week. You know, people that are just in a panic, that just uh, want to know what to do, where they can turn to. So, anyway, let's take that and fast forward a little bit, maybe to next Thanksgiving. Hopefully we can get, the game, get able to get together next Thanksgiving. But, you know, siblings could, you know, you can sit around, as you sit around and talk about Things, you know, your siblings could you know, possibly be at odds over some aspect of this process or be at odds over who's going who's gonna to get what or the length of the time that the process takes. So, you know, do that for me if you don't mind. Give that some thought and see what you do. And then, you know, I feel like most folks, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, you know, you'll come to the, you know, the inescapable conclusion that I need to do something. And that's what we call planning. And, you know, planning is not just... A word when you think about it planning is something that has to be done in advance you can't plan for something at the last minute because you can't get the results you want so um, planning you know if you if you go through that and think about it you're going to come to the conclusion that i have to do something i have to do something so that people know what to, you know how to how to deal with this a good example is you know i told you earlier that when i built my house i made it pretty self-sufficient well when something happens it kind of turns out that i'm the only one to know how things work you know if i've got a turn on the generator or, or cross, cross power my solar panels, my hydroelectric with the batteries or something. I'm the only one who knows how to do that. So if something happened to me, I, I would literally be leaving my family in the dark. So a couple of years ago, I embarked on, you know, when I find some spare time, I'll sit and kind of write out procedure on how to do stuff. So anyway, um, that's sort of along the same line. So give that some thought. Do it. Uh, think about planning. This is a good time to do it, uh, you know, before they lock us all down again. But uh, let's... Uh, Give it some thought. Give me a call. Come see me. Uh, come to one of my seminars or attend uh, virtually one of my webinars, and uh, you'll see what's to be done. Uh, you got Prochowski Estate Law. That's all we do. It's estate planning, elder law, Medicaid planning, crisis planning. Uh, if, if you want to know what any of that means to you, give us a call. We'll talk about it. So I'm over there on the uh, southeast side of the square. Can't miss me. Just put up a new sign. Uh, Phone number is 363-7222. I'm on the radio station every Thursday morning. I'm at your sister station every Friday morning over in Lawrenceburg. Give us a call and we'll be glad to help you with that planning that you know just needs to be done. All right. Thank you very much, Dan Prochowski. And your uh, phone number again at your office. Phone number is 363-7222. And I'm on the southeast corner of the square. Just drop in. All right, sir. Thank you. Okay, have a, Butch. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Stay